we learn that Mother Earth is capable of things we never thought possible. As science has progressed, we start to get a better glimpse into the ever-elusive universe surrounding us. These recent discoveries will remind you not only of the power of nature, but our human potential to understand it. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at interesting discoveries and the facts behind them. The Cannibal Chimp Cannibalism, the act of eating the flesh of one's own species, is universally considered to be amongst the most abhorrent of human behaviours, with the gruesome practice condemned as a taboo in almost all human cultures. Yet, in the animal kingdom, cannibalism is a fairly common occurrence in some species, and one that, as a natural and instinctive animal behaviour, is viewed with much less disgust. Except in instances such as this one. In December 2014, a group of scientists led by Hitonoru Nishi of Kyoto University in Japan, who were studying chimpanzees in Tanzania's Mahali Mountains, were shocked and excited to witness the exceedingly rare sight of a mother chimp called Devota giving birth, in full view of the 20 or so other members of the group. It is well known that females tend to hide away for a period before and after giving birth, an absence known as maternity leave. Yet more shocking and highly disturbing was what the scientists observed. For the first time ever, a few seconds later, a male chimp called Darwin from the same group snatched the baby from its mother the moment it emerged and ran off with it into the bush, so fast in fact that Devota did not have time to even touch her newborn. The researchers set off in search of Darwin and found him over an hour later sitting up a tree clutching and eating away at the remains of the infant chimp. As he ate it, bits of the infant's body falling to the ground were picked up and consumed by other chimpanzees. Although the scientists were unable to ascertain whether the baby had been taken out by Darwin or been born still, what the incident did prove was an indication of why female chimpanzees leave their groups in the run-up to and aftermath of birth, to protect their young from being taken out by unrelated males. This grisly behaviour, repulsive as it undoubtedly is to humans, has an evolutionary explanation, first expounded by Charles Darwin, whereby males go to extreme lengths to procure a female with whom to mate and produce offspring of their own, thus enabling their genes to be passed down through the generations. This chilling yet fascinating story serves as a stark reminder of the importance of survival and the extremes that animals will go to to ensure their bloodline continues, even to the extent of stealing and eating the babies of others in their groups. Something to remember when you are next at a zoo watching those cheeky chimps swinging around their cages, pulling funny faces. Spear-wielding chimps After watching the 1968 film Planet of the Apes, audiences were shocked to see apes wielding weapons. While firearms are not a likely tool for chimps, it is actually quite common for them to use tools like twigs and sticks for termite fishing and collecting ants from anthills. There is one group of chimps, however, that have developed a way to get their food using tools in a more violent manner. Researchers observing a population of savannah chimps living in southeast Senegal were surprised to see the troop crafting tools that they then used to hunt other animals. Jill Prutz of Iowa State University and Paco Bertolani of the University of Cambridge observed a population of chimps living in the Fongoli area and watched on as the chimps hunted their prey like humans. These chimps were taking sticks and twigs, breaking off any additional branches and sharpening the ends with their teeth to form spears. They were then using the spears to hunt bush babies, also known as galagos, which are small furry creatures that look like squirrels. They noticed that the behaviour was almost uniquely exhibited by the females in the group. The larger males would hunt and subdue their prey, typically smaller green monkeys, using brute force. The females, on the other hand, would often be weighed down by their young and needed to develop a different strategy. Since bush babies sleep in hollow tree trunks during the day, the females identified an opportunity for easy prey. The researchers observed as the female chimps used their crafted spears to stab into the tree trunks to either injure or impale the sleeping creatures, 
so they could pull them out of their nests and eat them. The young chimps would observe the females and many began to pick up the strategy as well, meaning that this use of spears would be passed on to future generations. The researchers also found that this tool-wielding and hunting group was much more cooperative than most other chimp troops in Africa. The dominant males of the group actually allowed the smaller males and females to keep their prized food instead of stealing them for themselves. Most often in these troops, the smaller males, females and young chimps get the leftovers after the alphas have had their fill. But this was not the case with this particular hunting troop. Living in a drier part of Senegal that offers less food and resources, these chimps were forced to learn to hunt in order to maintain their supply of protein. New Parasitic Wasps Discovered Wasps are feared by many people. Recent scientists conducting tests in the Amazon recently discovered 15 new wasp species. The researchers said that they only paralyze spiders, with them saying that the way they manipulate spider behavior is still pretty complex and unique. From appearance alone, these new wasps are already much larger and colorful than the ones we are used to seeing in daily life. The largest of them can grow to multiple centimeters in length and also sport plenty of bright colors. Their discovery proves that there is still a lot more we have to learn about our world's jungles. The way that they choose to unleash their parasitic tendencies is particularly interesting. It is the female Acrotaphus wasps that attack the spiders, with them ensuring that the sting is done while the spider is still in the web. Once the venom starts to enter the bloodstream, the wasp will then lay one egg on the spider. As soon as that wasp larvae hatches from its shell, it will then burrow in the spider and start eating it. According to researchers, the method of controlling the spider's behavior in such a way is to ensure that their offspring survive. Not only do they get a place to temporarily live, but the spider can also function as their food source to aid their growth. Many scientists have noted how the behavior of the affected spider was particularly interesting and complex. Before the spider eventually succumbs to its inevitable end, it does not spin a normal web. Instead, the parasite wasp controls the spider to the point where it makes the arachnid spin a special web, one that protects the growing wasp from predators. That alone is what makes these new wasps an exciting source of intrigue for many researchers. In general, host manipulation is a rare phenomenon in the natural world. That is why these wasps provide a new mystery to explore as life in the jungle is further studied. A Belgian farmer accidentally moves the border of France. We tend to believe that country borders are, in our modern time, set in stone, but apparently this is not the case, as a Belgian farmer managed to spark controversy by re-establishing the French border. When an enthusiastic historian was walking in the forest between the two countries, he noticed that the stone, which symbolized the boundary between Belgium and France, had been moved a whole 7.5 feet. It turned out that a nearby farmer moved the stone because it was in the path of his tractor, unaware of the importance of the stone and, with the stone, he moved the entire portion of France's border. For the most part, both the Belgian and French populations have been able to laugh about the situation, although state officials are somewhat antsy over the move. The slightest move of a border brings with it tons of paperwork and establishments to sort out. The current border spans 620 kilometers, and the border was established in 1820 after Napoleon's infamous Waterloo defeat. The stone's original placement dates back to 1819, when the border was initially planned out. The mayor of the Belgian town where the border lies commented on the matter jovially. I was happy, my town was bigger, but the mayor of the French town opposite the border, boussigny sur was less amused. All those involved agreed on one thing, however, that a border conflict ought to be avoided. Currently, the plan is to make the Belgian authorities contact the farmer and have him return the stone to its original location. Though, if that does not happen, the case will be taken to the Foreign Ministry of Belgium and might cause another Franco-Belgian conflict, with the farmer risking criminal charges if he refuses to comply. The Treaty of Kotlik is a historical event of importance that is responsible for the formation of the border. 
there are several smaller treaties involved under it, signed by France back in the 19th century, but these treaties failed to solve all the Franco-Belgian problems of the territory. For the next few years, from 1820 until 1825, the French and Belgian people argued over the border's exact positioning. Borders of the 19th century, in general, were a thing of nightmares. With countless revamps, especially when it came to French borders with rivers bursting or rerouting, which, in turn, required revised border discussions with the neighbouring nations. The borders had to move again after the 1914 to 1918 conflict, when Alsace-Lorraine was returned from Germany under the Treaty of Versailles, which prompted debates of whether the Franco-Belgian border should also be re-established, but the discussion was abandoned soon thereafter. It is fortunate that Belgium and France have such a great political social relationship, because there have been reports of locals moving and even vandalising other countries' border landmarks as symbols of rebellion between neighbouring nations with poor social political connections. The fact that both France and Belgium took the accidental movement of the border in comedic stride helps avoid conflict, but there is always the potential for future problems. As much as we like to believe we handle things better than leaders of our past, it is easy to fall into a conflict with other countries regarding borders and civil rights. But what do you make of these recent findings? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.